Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to lesson 6.2, Generate Equivalent Fractions. Our essential question for tonight is how can you use multiplication to find equivalent fractions? Please write this down in your study notes. How can you use multiplication to find equivalent fractions? So let's take a look at our first question. It says, Patty needs three-fourths cup of dish soap to make homemade bubble solution. Her measuring cup is divided into eighths. What fraction of the measuring cup should Patty fill with the dish soap? So what we know is that she needs three-fourths cups of dish soap to make homemade bubbles. However, her measuring cup is divided into eighths. So we need to ask ourselves, if her cup is divided into eighths and she needs three-fourths, well, how many eighths are in three-fourths? So I went ahead and drawn two models for you. I created the first model to show three-fourths because that's how much she needs to make her dish soap. And now what we're going to do with the second model is we're going to take that three-fourths model and we're going to cut it into eighths because that's how much that her measuring cup is divided into. It's divided into eighths. So if I have three-fourths here, and I want to cut this whole model into eighths, I'm going to make a straight line down the center vertically. And what that does is now you can see I have eight equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because I have eight equal parts, you can see that it equals six eighths because I see one, two, three, four, five, six parts are shaded in out of eight. So this fraction shows six eighths. This fraction shows three fourths, just like we learned in yesterday's lesson. Three fourths is equivalent to six eighths. But what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how you can use multiplication to find the answer instead of using a model. Multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number will create an equivalent fraction. Let's take that last example. She had three-fourths cups, and she wants to make it into eighths. Three-fourths equals how many eighths? Well, what we're going to do is this. If I, my question is how many eighths are three-fourths, I can do this. I can multiply my denominator by two, and get 8 because 4 times 2 is 8. To keep equivalent fractions, whatever you multiply your denominator by, you also need to multiply the numerator by. That way it keeps it balanced. 3 fourths times 2 halves equals 6 eighths. 3 times 2 is 6 and 4 times 2 is 8. Therefore 6 eighths equals 3 fourths. They're both equivalent. They mean the same amount. For example, if I had two-fifths equals how many fifteenths? Well, you have to ask yourself, five times what equals fifteen? I know my multiples are five. Five, ten, fifteen. So five times three is fifteen. Therefore, two times three is six. So two-fifths is equivalent to six fifteenths. Let's try one more example just so you get the hang of this. What if I had four eighths and I want to know how many sixteenths that would equal? Well, I would just say eight times two equals sixteen and four times two equals eight. So four eighths equals the same value as eight sixteenths. They're equivalent fractions. Let's practice some more. So in your study notes, I want you to write two equivalent fractions for four-fifths. You can pick any number you want to multiply your numerator and denominator by, as long as it's the same number. So for example, if we're finding an equivalent fraction for four-fifths, and I want to find an equivalent one, I can say, let's start easy and multiply my numerator and denominator by two. Five times two is 10, and four times two is eight. 8 tenths has the same value as 4 fifths because if I were to draw a model of 4 fifths shaded in, it would equal the same value as 8 tenths shaded in. Let's try one more for 4 fifths. 
four fifths could also equal how many fifteenths? Well, I know five times three is fifteen, and four times three is twelve. Therefore, two equivalent fractions for four fifths would be eight tenths and twelve fifteenths. They all have the same value. Now let's write two equivalent fractions for two fourths. What if we wanted to multiply my numerator and denominator both by two? Well, I want you to think of it like this. Two fourths times two halves equals eight as my denominator and four as my numerator. And I want you to understand the equivalent fractions means that they have the same value. And I really want you to understand why. Look at this fraction as two halves. Two halves, if I were to shade in two halves, one half, two halves, doesn't that equal one whole? It sure does. And remember, to be equal, it must have the same value. And I want you to remember our properties. Any number multiplied by one always equals itself. Well, isn't two halves the same value as one whole? It sure is. So two fourths times one whole equals four eighths. It means that it equals itself. Any number times one always equals itself. So I'm showing you that equivalent fractions means that they have the same value. They mean the same amount. Two fourths equals four eighths. Let's try another equivalent fraction for two fourths. If I had two fourths, and let's say I wanted to multiply it by three thirds, remember multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number, I would get six twelfths. Because three thirds really does equal one whole, and any number times one always equals itself. Therefore, these are equivalent. They have the same value. Two fourths times three thirds equals six twelfths. These are equivalent fractions. So I could say two fourths equals four eighths, like we did up here, and it also equals six twelfths, just like we did down here. These are all equivalent fractions. So let's find equivalent fractions for three six. All right, remember, whatever you multiply your numerator by, you must multiply your denominator by. So let's find an equivalent fraction for 3, 6. I want to multiply my numerator and denominator both by 2, so I'm going to multiply it by 2 halves. Therefore, 3, 6 equals 6 twelfths. These are the same values. They are equivalent. 3, 6 could also... If I multiply my numerator and denominator by the same number, then, and, and you could pick whatever ones you want to, I'm just going to show you the examples that I would do. I'm going to multiply them both by 4 this time, 4 fourths, which still equals 1 whole. Any number multiplied by 1 whole always equals itself. So this equals 12 20 fourths. So I could say 3 6 is equal to 6 twelfths like we noticed up here, and that's also equal to 12 24ths. They all have the same value. So I want you to ask yourself, are these two fractions equivalent? Go ahead and pause this video and think about it. When you think you have the answer, write it down in your notes, and then check it with me when you press unpause. Okay, if you pressed unpause, that means you've already done the question. You should have said that 5 6 is not equivalent to 10 eighteenths. The reason why is because if you multiply 6 times 3 to get 18, you would have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. And 5 times 3 is 15. So 5 6 should really be equal to 15 eighteenths. Or you might have done it this way. You might have said, well, I know that 5 times 2 equals 10, so 6 times 2 equals 12. So 5 6 is equivalent to 10 twelves. Therefore, 5 6 is not equivalent to 10 eighteenths. 
Hope you got that one right. Let's try another. Okay, again, I want you to try to solve this one on your own. When you're done, press unpause and see if you agree with me. All right, for this one, you should have said one fourth is equal to two eighths. And here's why. Because four times two is eight, and one times two is two. Therefore, one fourth is equivalent to two eighths. And here's a quick model to show you why. Here's a model of one fourth. If I were to turn this model into eighths, I would have to divide each one of these fourths in half to make eight parts. Therefore, I can see that I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 equal parts, and 2 are shaded in. Therefore, 1 fourth is equivalent to 2 eighths. So here are your two homework questions for tonight. Number one says, Sam needs a piece of rope that's 2 third yards long. Which fraction is equivalent to 2 thirds? Could it be A, 8 fifteenths of a yard? B, 6 twelfths yards? C, 8 twelfths yards, or D, 4 fifths yards. Go ahead and find the equivalent fraction for 2 thirds using the strategy I taught you today. Number 2 says, Wesley colored a poster. He colored 2 fifths of the poster red. Which fraction is equivalent to 2 fifths? Could it be A, 4 tenths, B, 4 fifths, C, 7 tenths, or D, 2 halves? Go ahead and answer those two questions, and when you're finished with these two questions, please make sure that you rate yourself on how you feel. Level one will be novice, and if you feel like you're a novice, please rewatch this again. Level two is apprentice. You're starting to get it, but you might need coaching. If that's the case, I also would like for you to rewatch this video again. Level three is practitioner. You really understand this, and you can't wait to practice it tomorrow in class. And level four is expert. You really understand this well that you could teach it to someone else. Again, here are your questions. Please go ahead and work them out and be ready to practice tomorrow in class. I'll see you then. Bye.